Hey guys, it's GA1, and let's be honest, budgeting isn't exactly the most exciting topic. In fact, for a lot of people, it's right up there with doing taxes and going to the DMV. But here's the thing, taking control of your money is crucial, and it all starts with a solid budget. Right now, you might be looking at your finances thinking, where did all my money go? You're bombarded with bills. You're not saving as much as you'd like. And you might even be making a few impulse purchases along the way. Trust me, I've been there. In this video, we're going to break down the five biggest budgeting blunders people make, and more importantly, how to fix them. So if you're ready to finally master your money and achieve your financial goals, stick around because this video is for you. Let's face it, diving headfirst into the world of budgeting can feel like trying to understand a foreign language. It's overwhelming, and a lot of people simply don't know where to start. So they do nothing. They avoid creating a budget altogether, and that's mistake number one. Look, I get it. Staring at a blank spreadsheet or trying to make sense of a complicated budgeting app can make your head spin. But here's the key. Budgeting doesn't have to be complicated. It's about creating a roadmap for your money, a plan for where you want it to go. Think of it like planning a road trip. You wouldn't just hop in the car and start driving without knowing your destination or how you're going to get there, right? The same goes for your money. You need a plan. One of the simplest and most effective budgeting strategies is the 50-30-20 rule. This is where you allocate 50% of your after-tax income to your needs, 30% to your wants, and 20% to savings and debt repayment. It's a straightforward framework that can help you gain control of your finances without getting bogged down in the details. Now, you might be thinking, Graham, what exactly falls under needs versus wants? Great question. Needs are your essential expenses, the non-negotiables like rent or mortgage payments, utilities, groceries, and transportation. Basically, things you absolutely need to survive and function in your daily life. Wants, on the other hand, are the fun stuff, the things that bring you joy but aren't essential for survival. Think dining out, entertainment, travel, that new pair of shoes you've been eyeing, you get the idea. The beauty of the 50-30-20 rule is that it's a flexible framework. You can adjust the percentages based on your individual circumstances and financial goals. For example, if you're carrying a lot of debt, you might want to allocate more than 20% to debt repayment and reduce your wants category. The bottom line is this. Don't let the fear of complexity prevent you from creating a budget. Start simple. Use a method that resonates with you. And remember, even a basic budget is better than no budget at all. All right, let's talk about budgeting mistake number two, underestimating your expenses. This is a trap that's all too easy to fall into, and it can really throw your budget off track. You see, a lot of people make the mistake of only budgeting for their big recurring expenses, things like rent, car payments, and utilities. While those are definitely important, it's the smaller, often overlooked expenses that can really add up. Think about it. That daily coffee run, those impulse buys at the grocery store checkout, those subscriptions you forgot you were even paying for, they might seem insignificant on their own, but over time, they can make a serious dent in your finances. I've been there myself. I used to think I was pretty good with my money, but then I started tracking my expenses meticulously and realized I was spending way more than I thought on things like eating out and random online purchases. It was a real eye-opener. The best way to combat this budgeting blunder is to track your spending for at least a month preferably three, and I mean track everything. Every single dollar that leaves your wallet needs to be accounted for. You can use a budgeting app, a spreadsheet, or even just a good old-fashioned notebook. The method doesn't matter as much as the act of tracking itself. Once you've tracked your spending for a while, you'll start to see patterns emerge. You'll identify your spending triggers, those situations or emotions that lead you to spend money impulsively. Maybe you're a stress spender, or perhaps you tend to overspend when you're with certain friends. Armed with this knowledge, you can start to anticipate those triggers and develop strategies to avoid them. For example, if you know you tend to overspend online when you're bored, try finding a free or low-cost activity to do instead, like going for a walk, reading a book, or calling a friend. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to budgeting. The more you understand your spending habits, the better equipped you'll be to make informed decisions about your money. Let's move on to budgeting mistake number three, failing to account for savings. Here's the thing, guys. Saving money shouldn't be an afterthought. It's not something you do with whatever's left over at the end of the month. It needs to be a non-negotiable part of your budget, just like paying your rent or your phone bill. Think of it this way. You work hard for your money, 
so why not make your money work hard for you? When you prioritize saving, you're essentially paying yourself first. You're setting yourself up for financial security and creating a safety net for unexpected expenses or emergencies. Now I know what you might be thinking, Graham, saving money is easier said than done. I'm barely making ends meet as it is, and I hear you. But here's the thing, saving doesn't have to be about putting away huge chunks of money every month. Even small, consistent contributions can add up over time, especially when you factor in the power of compound interest. One of the most effective ways to make saving a habit is to automate it. Set up an automatic transfer from your checking account to your savings account every time you get paid. You can start small, even if it's just $20 or $50 a month. The key is to make it consistent and automatic so you don't even have to think about it. Another helpful tip is to set specific savings goals. Having a clear target in mind can make saving feel more tangible and motivating. Do you want to buy a house? Go on a dream vacation? Retire early? Whatever your goals may be, write them down, figure out how much you need to save, and break it down into smaller, more manageable monthly or weekly savings targets. Remember, saving isn't about depriving yourself. It's about prioritizing your future financial well-being and giving yourself options. Start small, be consistent, and watch your savings grow over time. Let's talk about budgeting blunder number four, impulse purchases and lack of spending control. This is a big one, guys. And it's something I think we can all relate to in today's world of instant gratification and online shopping at our fingertips. Think about it. How many times have you been scrolling through social media, seen an ad for something that caught your eye, and clicked buy now without even thinking twice? Or maybe you're at the grocery store, just planning to pick up a few essentials, and you end up walking out with a cart full of impulse buys. These types of purchases can really derail your budget especially when they become a regular occurrence. The problem is, our brains are wired to seek out pleasure and rewards, and those instant gratification hits we get from shopping can be incredibly addictive. But here's the good news, there are strategies you can implement to break the cycle of impulse spending and regain control over your spending habits. One of the most effective strategies is the 24-hour rule. Here's how it works. Before you make any non-essential purchase, Give yourself a 24-hour cooling off period. During that 24 hours, really think about whether you need the item, whether it aligns with your budget and your financial goals, and whether you'll still want it as much tomorrow. You might be surprised how many times that initial urge to buy simply fades away after you've had some time to reflect. Another helpful tip is to use budgeting apps that allow you to set spending limits for different categories. For example, you could set a monthly limit for dining out, entertainment, or clothing. Once you hit that limit, the app will notify you, helping you stay accountable to your budget. Remember guys, building good spending habits takes time and effort. It's not about being perfect, it's about being mindful of your spending choices and making conscious decisions that align with your financial goals. Let's move on to the fifth and final budgeting blunder, not reviewing and adjusting your budget regularly. Here's the thing guys, your financial situation isn't static, it's constantly evolving. You might get a raise, switch jobs, have unexpected expenses come up, or experience a major life change like getting married or having a baby. All of these events can impact your income and expenses, which is why it's so important to review and adjust your budget on a regular basis. I recommend doing a thorough budget review at least once a month, but quarterly is fine too. Think of it like going to the doctor for a checkup. You wouldn't wait until you're seriously ill to seek medical attention, right? The same principle applies to your finances. Regular check-ins can help you identify potential problems early on and make adjustments as needed. During your budget review, take some time to reflect on what's working well and what's not. Are you consistently overspending in certain categories? Are there areas where you could potentially cut back? Have your income or expenses changed significantly since you last reviewed your budget? Based on your findings, make adjustments to your budget as needed. This might mean allocating more money to certain categories, cutting back in others, or finding ways to increase your income. Remember, your budget isn't meant to be set in stone. It's a living, breathing document that should evolve alongside your financial situation and goals. By reviewing and adjusting it regularly, you can stay on track and make sure you're still moving in the right direction. So there you have it guys, the five biggest budgeting blunders and more importantly, how to fix them. Remember, creating a solid budget doesn't have to be complicated or overwhelming. It's about making conscious choices about your money and setting yourself up for financial success. Start by choosing a budgeting method that works for you. 
whether it's the 50-30-20 rule, a budgeting app, or a simple spreadsheet. Track your expenses meticulously, automate your savings, and don't be afraid to adjust your budget as needed. If you're ready to take control of your finances and start achieving your financial goals, take action today. Download a budgeting tool, create a simple budget and commit to reviewing it regularly. Your future self will thank you.